Okay, I can, I can start. Um, one of the things that people routinely complain about is students not completing their work on time. And students have just moved into a new learning management system. And it's pretty easy for people to lose track of what they're supposed to do, especially if they're working on a new system when, with new classes where people haven't always optimized these to make it easier for students. And there's some nice tools in Brightspace that make it easy to send reminders to students about work that is due, to add things to the calendar, and to make it really hard for students to forget what's due each week. And because Maggie hasn't set some of these up yet, she's going to demonstrate that. So we're going to talk a little bit first about intelligent agents and replace strings that can be used with those and with many other things. And then we'll talk a little bit about checklists. So, yeah, so, um, you know, like John said, um, you know, intelligent agents are really good tools to help you know, create automatic reminders, but we can do so in a way that personalizes those reminders to, you know, further engage um, with students. So, you know, the, um, you know, the easiest way to set up an intelligent agent is to first select the course that you're interested in um, creating the agent for. Um, and when you go into course tools to head to your course admin page. So, once you get into the course admin page, um, you'll see under communication, there's a link here for intelligent agents. And so um, you can go ahead and click on that. And you will see that I have no agents um, currently created. And so this is, you know, um, a, a blank slate, a nice blank slate for us to, uh, to work on. So I'll go, I'll go ahead and um, create a new agent. I saw Maybe a weekly log on check would be a good good one to yeah. start with. Yeah, so you know, I, I think we've talked about this in other sessions before, but I think it bears repeating that, you know, one of the earliest kind of ways you can um, ensure student success in the class is making sure that they've, you know, logged in and engaged with your course. Um, it, John probably has a better, um, you know, has probably the citation to um, talk more about that. Um, but this, you know, agent is going to um, send a, a weekly reminder, um, should I call it weekly reminder to log on? That sounds good. Oh, well, yeah. We'll call it that. So this description um, here is just for my use. Um, the students won't see um, the description that you write here, um, but it's you know a good space for you to kind of remember what this particular agent is doing. Um, to ask students to log on to Brightspace, um, of course, pages. Um, so you can create categories um, for your intelligent agents, which is helpful if you're um, trying to, you know, organize a lot of different agents. So if you have agents that are um, simply about reminders um, for students, you can, you know, certainly create a category here. Um, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to create a category called uh, reminders. Or maybe login reminders because yeah, log in, that's many good. of the things you'll use will still be reminders. Yeah, so log on reminders for this one. Um, you know, you can do assignment reminders, you know, test reminders, um, submission generally reminders. So this, you know, will kind of create a category that I can easily organize my agents on. Um, so, you know, before we will, um, you know, we'll want to make sure the agent is enabled for our class. So I'll go ahead and, um, click on that. You can create the agents and then enable them at a later point, I suppose, if you're, um, you know, setting this up, you know, further in advance to your course beginning. Um, so um, under scheduling, it gives you the option to run this, um, or the frequency of which you're running the agent. So this is going to translate to how many um, reminders they're going to get. So um, I'm going to go ahead and do this as a weekly reminder because that's the 
title of my agent is a uh, weekly reminder to log on. Um, so every week, um, you know, I'll get to, I, and I can decide how many weeks this is going to continue through, or I can create an end date, um, which is an important thing to do because if you don't um, put an end date on, it'll continue even after the course is finished. Is that correct, John? Um, I've never done it without process. an end date. I think it, if, if it's not required, it's certainly something you should do. Yes. Yeah. So you don't get reminders going past the end of the semester. Yeah, because, you know, you, if students aren't logging on during their uh, winter breaks, you know, they they probably don't want a weekly reminder that um, they've not logged on to a course that they're no longer um, taking. So I'll um, I'll end that reminder. Um, I'll, I'll the last day of classes this semester is on the second, but I'm going to let that end um, a week later and and select every one week. Yes, because you do have the option of how frequent. So, you know, I, yeah, you can, I suppose, change the weeks there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do this on Sunday just because my due dates tend to be on Mondays um, for this particular course. So this will send them a reminder on Sunday that you know they've not yet logged on. It'll give them a little bit of a buffer to um, jump in, or hopefully they'll be reminded to get on to Brightspace, see what to do. All of their due dates in this particular class are on Mondays. So I'll, I'll let that reminder happen on a Sunday. Um, and I'm gonna do that at 9 a.m. You know, you can pick a particular time or day that suits you. All right. And then, um, you know, I'm going to go ahead and apply this to all users in the class. And I'm going to select, um, because again, this is a login um, reminder, I'm going to select login activity. Um, and essentially, this is going to create the condition in which the reminder is set. Um, sent out to the student. And so uh, in this particular case, I want to make sure that if the student hasn't logged in within the last week or seven days, that on Sunday, if they've met this requirement or they've met this condition, they will get an email sent out um, at 9 a.m. So if they've not logged in during the last seven days at 9 a.m. On, on a Sunday, they'll get uh, this email reminder. And, you know, John, do you want to talk about other release conditions or should we save that? Well, let's, let's just do this one first and then we can talk about some others. I've got some set up if you want, we could switch over. Yeah. So, um, you know, once now, one thing though, um, you do have the option while well, it's a login reminder. All this is doing is checking to see if they've logged in. It doesn't check to see whether they've actually accessed your course. This is just checking in to see if they're in Brightspace. So you may want to change that to course activity uh, that they haven't accessed their course in seven days because That's you know while point. you know they may have logged in and done other courses, but if they're ignoring yours, that may be yeah. what you're more concerned with. So I, I generally would use a course activity. as the Yeah, option. that's, that's a really good point. Um, you know, so yeah, to make sure that the students actually gone into your class, um, you know, especially if, um, you know, you happen to have students who are enrolled in several of your classes, you know, that they kind of have an idea of which class that, you know, is um, getting flagged in this good, good point. Very good point. Um, all right, so once, you know, so I've switched this now to course activity. So they've not accessed the course in the last seven days. I wanna make sure that they're notified um, that that's probably something they should be doing uh, to remain successful in the class, um, is that they're keeping up to date with um, things that are um, contents that's being delivered um, in Brightspace for the class and grades and so forth. So. Um, you know, this um, next window is going to um, determine what get what happens once that condition is met. Um, and, um, you know, for this particular one, I want um, students to be notified every time they've met that criteria. So, um, you know, 
I, I'm sure there, John probably has some ideas of why this particular um, option, the first one to take action only the first time, um, you know, might be useful. But for this particular agent, I'm going to have that reminder sent out every time that condition has been met um, and when the agent is run um, or evaluated. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. And then I think, John, do they get an email notified or do I, is this, this is sending an yes. email to myself? Yes. Is that the This case? is an email to the student. Okay. Um, great. So, um, so this is what the student is now going to see when we are. Uh, yeah, you do have to put in the to address and the to address has to go to, and this is tricky if you haven't worked through this before, right. initiating user um, in curly braces. Yeah. I'm sorry, in square brackets, square is it, brackets. Is it square? Okay. Yeah. Initiating user. Okay. All right. So, you know, there's, and we're going to talk a little bit more about the string replacements, um, you know, but um, this is one of those things that um, you'll want to make a note of, you know, write this down or, you know, make sure you refer back to this point in the video because it's not, um, it, you know, the phrase initiating user certainly makes sense, but it may not be something that you're thinking of, you know, right off the bat when you're creating these. So make sure you uh, make a note of, of that. Um, so the subject. You, you probably oh, also want to copy yourself. So you're getting notifications of who has met the conditions. So you can either do a CC or a BCC either way. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll actually go ahead and put it on the BCC line. Just preference um, in that. So um, for the subject, um, you know, this is the email subject line that they're going to see. Um, you know, you can, you know, you can decide, you know, how you want to, um, you know, phrase it, but um, essentially, um, uh, you know, you want to notify them that you've noticed that they haven't been accessing the course. Um, so, um, reminder to, reminder to log in to our course. So the message, this is what's going to be kind of sent in the text of the email notification. So, um, you know, the um, some of the ways we can personalize um, this, um, you know, message, you know, can, um, you know, be done using replace strings. And so, you know, the, um, you know, for, for this, because, you know, I want to create a, you know, kind of more engaged um, um, culture in, in the class or more informal culture, I'll probably just um, select their first name, you know, to address them as. So you can either copy and paste or you can type um, initiating user first name into um, the text there. So just so I don't um, screw that up. Oops, wrong part. Okay, I guess I'll just type it. Initiating user, user first name. Okay. Let's make sure that's right. Initiating user uh, first name, yep. Um, I always wonder if I'm spelling initiating correct, <laughs> so I like to double check that. Um, so this is going to auto, you know, populate the first name of the student who this reminder is going out to. You could include the last name if you prefer as well. Um, you know, you can you can even uh, we've we've kind of talked about this in previous sessions, but you can even you know talk about what the name of your course is, but because the course name isn't, um, you know, the, um, the, the course um, ID is a very long kind of um, code. And so it's um, not always the most um, efficient way to, um, you know, 
alert students to the course that you're talking about. John, did you want to add something? No, pretty that? much first name is the most common yeah. one. First name is probably the most common that you'll use. Um, so, um, you know, you'll finish your text however you want it. Um, I'm actually going to use this agent in my class. And so I'm going to just spend a, a minute, um, you know, on creating this message. So this is a reminder to check back into our course on Brightspace. Um, or maybe I'll make it even more personal. Um, I have noticed that you haven't logged into our course on Brightspace. So this is a reminder to check back into our course. Uh, any questions about our class, please feel free to email me. Best. Okay. So I've created a little message here. It's going to address the user by their first name. Um, you know, it's, um, I think this is going to be quite, you know, common. Of course, some students may not go by their first name. So you may run into, um, you know, um, students who are using uh, middle names or, or other names um, in class, but this is going to use the first name that's provided in Brightspace for them. So if they if they have any questions or, you know, they're confused why, you know, you call them Sam in class, um, but their name, you know, on Brightspace as you're addressing them is Samuel or something to that effect. So just something to keep in mind. Yeah, this should be the preferred name, whatever they indicated is their preferred name. Okay. And they can they can do that, um, you know, separately. Um, is that correct? On bright, can they do that on Brightspace? Uh, not in Brightspace, but the college has a site for it, and that feeds okay. into the SUNY Global ID. Okay, perfect. So, good. so I'll go ahead, and I'm going to save and close. Of course, you know, if you had, you know, attachments, you could you could add that there as well. Go ahead and save and close that. All right, so my agent is, um, you know, planning on running this upcoming Sunday at 9 a.m. Um, and any student who's yet to log in, which they should be logging in in my class, particularly weekly, because they have assignments due each week that are available on Brightspace and only available on Brightspace. So um, this will, you know, give them kind of a, a nudge reminder, um, you know, that I've noticed they haven't logged on and I want them to do so. So that is how you, you know, create um, an intelligent agent. And you can do so for, for lots of things. And I think actually John might um share his screen to show you some other agents sure. that he's done so i'll go ahead and stop sharing on mine um you know the um you know other thing i i guess i, I could mention um you know is that you can you can always um you know look back at the history of of those you know how many times it's been run and you'll see that as john's sharing on his screen he's identified, you know, a number of people who, you know, have fit the criteria he's interested in. So. Yeah, so this is, I, in this, I only have a few reminders set up. One is I have a couple of discussions that run each week. And one of the problems is students often wait until the last minute before they participate in it. And just sending these reminders out really helps. And it's very similar to the process. I call this a discussion. Well, let me, if we edit one of these, it'll show you what it looks like. And um, there's a message that goes out. I created a category called discussion reminders. And one of the nice things about, about using the categories is it will group them together. So if there's something you wanna repeat on a weekly basis, they're all there and it makes it easier to add new ones and so forth. Um, and again, everyone visible in the class list, um, except here it's based on a condition and there's a whole series of conditions that you can apply. And in particular, the one that I chose, what, well, um, 
Well, you have the choice when you have multiple conditions of either all conditions have to apply or any one of them must apply. And because I have two discussions, I want to remind them whether they're missing either of those. So I put basically that any condition must be met. Um, but there's a wide variety of things here that we could do. Um, and the condition types are, it could be assignments, whether or not students have submitted something to a folder, whether, they, whether they've received feedback on it, whether they, um, it could be key to the score on a rubric that you use for them or whether, again, there's no submission. Um, so notice there's both a submission to a folder and a no submission to folder. So you could set it up, we lost everybody. Uh, so you could set it up so that students will receive notification when they do um, when they've submitted something just to acknowledge their submission. Or you could set it up so that they get a reminder to do it if they haven't done it by a specific date. Um, you could also, if you're using awards, basically the equivalent of badges, you could set it up so that whenever they meet the criteria for an award, that it's just going to go out to them automatically, letting them know that they've satisfied this. And if you've gone through the SUNY training, that's how the SUNY training generates your certificates and so forth. Um, and then one of the things we'll talk about shortly is checklists. Um, you can send notes to students, reminding them if they have, when they completed the checklist, or if they've completed one of the items, or if they haven't completed all or one of the items. So there's lots of options there. Um, you could let them notice when, notify them when they're assigned to a group based on some other activities, whether they've mastered various competencies, whether they've visited or not visited certain content area and so forth. And also a really useful thing, which I haven't set up yet, but it does a lot of the stuff that Starfish does, but it can be done automatically, is you can tie um, individual, you can have automatic reminders go out based on student score. So if their final grade score, which can be measured at any point in the semester, is below a certain threshold, you can automate reminders of things that perhaps they should be doing and so forth, and similarly for quizzes and, and surveys and so on. Um, and one of the other nice things, I'm going to cancel this because I don't want to actually change this, but one of the nice things is if I go back up to the list of, um, of agents here, oh, and I should note that this is one case where it is done only the first time the agent is triggered because it's something I want to do only once, just sending them a reminder that they haven't done this yet. Um, and... With other things, for example, with an award that's being achieved, you may want to set that up so it's hourly, but it's only done when the award is met. So that, you know, they're not going to get hourly messages saying that they achieved some certificate, for example, they'll only receive it once. Um, okay, and it's the same basic structure as before. Um, but now I'm going to uh, cancel out of here and go back to the, um, the list of these. One of the nice things about this is once you created them, because this is something that's key to different events every week, all you have to do now is copy it. And once you've copied it, I can set up my week four announcements. Um, and to do that, I just go into it um, and I'm going to edit it. This is now going to be my module four discussion reminder. Um, and this makes it a whole lot easier to update things. Um, the same message would go out, but, um, and again, this is not, this is only going to happen once. Um, and this is going to happen, but this, this is done weekly. So mm -hmm. it's going to be a week after nine, six, which would just be here, um, all visibles, um, all visible students. And this now is going to be tied to their fourth weekly discussion. So I'm going to create one, which is tied to their, whether or not they've submitted any discussion posts right here that they've done no posts. And I'm going to do that for the fourth week uh, of this. And I'm also going to add another condition for the, um, the other discussion forum that takes place this week, um, which is right here. Okay. Um, and this will be the fourth content discussion. Um, makes it a little bit easier just to keep track of it this way. And now that's already set up for next week, um, except for one thing. And this is something that it's really easy to forget because when you copy it, what it will do is automatically, it will leave it 
not enabled because otherwise it would, um, if it was automatically enabled when you copied it, it would just duplicate the last one. And then you'd get an extra one sent out if you're doing it in advance. So, um, so make sure when you copy these that you um, enable, enable the agent. agent. Because um, as you can see, I forgot to do that last week if we go back up to the list here, because this will show you when it was run. And this one was supposed to run Saturday, but it didn't because I forgot to enable it. Um, and by the time it was done, I noticed that it was too late, but it will tell you how many people were identified and it's a good way of keeping track of where students are doing. Um, and, and that's pretty much it, I think, with intelligence agents. But again, you can set it to praise students when they're doing well, acknowledge the receipt of submissions for students, mm -hmm. and you can do an awful lot with this, but it does take some time. But yeah. once you've set it up, it's easy to automate and continue it. Yeah. John, could you just uh, hop into one of yours really quick? I just want to sure. clarify um, because I think when I, um, you know, created the uh, new agents in my course, as an example, um, I think we ended up putting the initiating user in the two thing as square brackets, but I noticed that yours are in the squiggly brackets. And so- um, uh, No, these are square brackets. Are it looked that way to me too, which is why I first oh, said, okay. they well, but they are okay. square, it's just the screen. <laughs> oh, gotcha. Okay. So, you know, just to, yeah, make sure that's, um, I didn't want to give wrong information in mind. It is um, the square brackets. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Good. So, the, excellent. Then, um, you know, the other thing that, um, you know, I, I suppose, um, you know, I, I wasn't able to, you know, confirm but um, because I hadn't created any of the agents in my course yet until just now when I created it in this session. But, um, you know, there's um, an option, I believe, where you can copy your agents from one course from one to another. Course another. Yes. Um, and so, you know, that will make it, you know, really easy. You know, of course, you'll, as John or reminded, you know, to make sure you enable those agents, you know, once they're copied over and to update them in the way that, you know, fits for your next course. But, you know, it means that you won't have to, you know, keep reinventing the wheel. You can, you know, copy, especially things like log on reminders. You can, you know, make it broad enough so that it just refers to the course, you know, and that way you don't have to change the language. It will, you know, copy over um, and make sense for um, regardless which class you're using and, it for. And once SUNY gets around to creating the learning object repositories and enabling them, that's a really powerful feature because it will allow institutions to share share things like agents or any other content within departments or across the whole institution or even across all of SUNY. In fact, I'm chairing a committee that's going to be working on that this year with SUNY. Um, yeah. And it gives some, it's going to give some nice options of some making some of this work easier for people. So you'll be able to, if you can find some good agents out there, you'll be able to download them from um, our learning object repository or a SUNY learning object repository, which should be really helpful in, in giving us more options here. Now, one other thing we wanted to mention related to replace strings though, is that in, in any text that you use here, other than the titles of announcements or email, um, other than the title of announcements, you can use replace strings as well. So when you send announcements to students, you could just insert there the name of the student. And there it is just, it's a little bit simpler uh, for this. Let me, um, let me see, where, where are the announcements? Um, I guess I have to go back here. Yeah. Course admin. That's where I always find it in the communications. Mm -hmm. And then if we go to announcements, what you can see in the announcements um, is, for example, you notice here it says, hi, John. Uh, the way you get that, because it's going to me, the way you get that is you just insert the um, first name, and this is within Curly Bracey's. So the replace string there is Curly Bracey's rather than the, um, the square, bra the square, square bracket. brackets. So you can just put first name in and then it will replace it with the student's name. So it just creates a little more sense of presence and, and so on. Um, anything else? 
Um, on this? I, I think, you know, that kind of covers a lot. You know, again, you can, um, when you're creating, you know, especially when you're in that intelligent agents menu, it gives you a lot of different options for replace strings, but more often than not, you're going to use the first name as the replace string. So, um, you know, again, it kind of creates that more personalized experience and, um, you know, will be, um, um, you know, useful for any way you communicate with students. But yeah, the next thing uh, we wanted to show everyone um, were the use of checklists. And John's gotten some pretty positive feedback from students. On, yeah, several um, students have noted that they found this really useful and they wish all of their instructors had done that. I got that feedback in the first week um, of the course. And they're really easy to do. All you do is you, well, I can show you an existing one first, but um, we'll create a checklist. Well, we'll edit the checklist. You just give it a title uh, and you give it a category. You can give it a category if you want. Um, and, oh, I'm sorry, you create the checklist and then you create categories within it. And the categories I chose are to complete certain things, to watch certain things and to participate in discussions. But basically whatever is appropriate for your course. Um, some people will have something like read, watch and do or something like that. Mm -hmm. But think about the broad categories you want students to do. And then with each item, you so you create the category and then you add items to it. So in my course, I'm using a Waymaker module, which has all the readings. It's basically like an e-text with video and interactive activities added to it. Um, it says these are the things they have to do with the due date uh, for them. And then um, I have them take some video quizzes where the videos I created and so forth. But when you create these, all you have to do is match it to a category, insert a due date, and then it adds it. And well, let's take a look at one, for example. When you create the item, it's going to give you the option of adding it to the calendar. And that's the most important part of this, that this is one way of getting everything that students have to do into the calendar. So when students log into Brightspace, it will show them what they need to do when. Um, and then just save that. And once you created the checklist, that's not quite enough. You have to add it to the particular module. Now, what I'm going to do to show you the easiest way of doing this, once you've created the first one, um, because it wouldn't be, I can't really put one of these out there because they're already embedded. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back up to, um, I'm going to cancel this and go back up and create a new one, which won't be the final one I'm using. But once you created it, you copy it and um, just go in and rename it. I'll call this a module four checklist. And this is really helpful, um, you know, especially if you have like standing weekly assignments like discussions and quizzes that, you know, would make it, um, you know, really nice to not have to, you know, completely create everything over again. You just have to update, you know, the titles and the dates and such. So, so I'm not going to actually do all this now, but basically, I'll just do this first one. So I changed this to update it to the correct module and I'll change the date. So, and it's just going to be a week later um, and it's gonna be displayed in the calendar. Um, and, and this, again, I, I didn't save the module four checklist. You had to do a, a save to get that in. Um, I'm going to leave the rest. Uh, I should probably update all of them, but I'm not going to uh, is because <laughs> there's a lot of stuff there. So I'm just going later. to save this yeah. and then show how you would add it to the module. So mm -hmm. you go to content and this is a little bit different about the way you add checklists than most of the other tools you add. So I'm going to go to module four in my course and I've created this new module four checklist, which I'm not going to leave there because it's not it's not accurate. But what you do is you go under existing activities and you scroll down to checklist and then you select whichever checklist you want added. Um, mm -hmm. And now it's added to there. I haven't, the broken topic or some old discussion forms that came over from Blackboard. I've been building this course week by week. So it's, you notice some of it's broken, but it will be fixed before it opens next week. And now the checklist is there. And then when students go to it, 
what will happen is it gives them a list of everything they have to do with the dates and they can check the boxes as they do them. And students mm -hmm. have found it really helpful. One suggestion though, is you have the option of opening it in a new window. And while that may be may seem like the best thing to do, if students are working it on this from a mobile device, that causes some navigation issues. So you probably don't want to have them open it in a new window. So it's just one of the list of activities. I put it at the very end of each module. So if we go to one of the modules, which is updated and working, um, notice you can put in some banners and so forth you can create. Um, it's just the very last item. And so when they check it, when they open it, we're looking at it from the instructor's view, but it gives you a list of all the things that can be done. Um, and that's pretty much it. Yeah. It's, again, a really uh, low stakes way to, you know, give students, you know, the ability to keep track of their work. Um, and, um, you know, it's, I think, even a good reminder for us as the instructors to like remember, you know, what are all the things that are going on this week? It's it's just a really good way to keep everything organized. And that's pretty much all we have, other than that to is. suggest that you try this. At the very least, try using the the first name when you mm -hmm. send out announcements to students or you know, emails to all students and so forth, or announcements is the most typical way of doing that. Yeah. Um, and and you know the the reminders are really nice, and they don't all have to be negative. They could be you did really well on this quiz, or you're doing really well. Keep up the good work, or you know, you give some nice positive reinforcement along the way. Yeah, which and I, I think, haven't done yet. And I think that um, you know to um, you know that point that even if you are notifying students of, you know, a grade that, you know, was lower than expected that you can, you know, keep these messages uh, framed in a growth mindset perspective so that you're encouraging them to talk with you to, you know, seek out other resources and connect them to those resources if they need it. Um, you know, there's really, I think, a lot of awesome opportunities to, um, you know, keep students motivated and, um, you know, help them, uh, you know, get the, get their work done and get it done on time. And it's really helpful to do this now rather than when students get interested in this a week before the semester ends, right. you know, because if they can correct any shortcomings and catch up to any work now, they'll have a much better foundation for the rest of the semester. Excellent. Okay. Well, thank you all for joining us from wherever you are. Um, and always feel free to email us if you have questions.